we'd like to welcome you here this afternoon on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon. I'm Mayor Pat Perouche, and we're going to dedicate a very, very special part of this building today, and we are delighted to have such a fantastic turnout. To start off our celebration this afternoon, I would like to introduce the Reverend Craig Owie, who is the minister at Star Presbyterian Church here in Royal Oak. Reverend Owie? Shall we bow in prayer? Almighty and all gracious God, we give you thanks for your grace in life all the days of our lives, for you created us to enjoy life and in life to reflect your glory. Today we come to dedicate this new wing of this building. We ask that we may share many days of joy here. May people hear and share their joy and laughter within these walls. May they also come and share their sorrows and be comforted and encouraged by one another. For truly there is not joy without sorrow. May this be a place where life is shared in all of its being. And we ask that you be present with us and with us as we endure life, laughter, joy, and sorrow here. Be with us not only today, but in each activity, in each touch, each extension of human life that happens here, each sharing of compassion. May this truly be a place where friends meet and are affirmed strengthened, encouraged, and enjoyed together. This is our prayer, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you make it so. Amen. The next item of our program is the song, God Bless America, which we would ask you all to join in on. And leading us in song is our very, very special director of this building, of the Senior Community Center, Maggie Kane. Maggie? wonderful people of all ages. I'd like you all to stand up and let's all give a wonderful, joyous version of God Bless America. <laughs> program for many years for three to five year olds also became a part of this building and the building was designed originally to hold both senior activities as well as youth activities so that each age group could gain and benefit from the other age group this preschool program here in Royal Oak has always been one of the best in the area and we are just so delighted to have them here in this building uh, they are going to sing the next song for us
introduce the rest of this committee is a very special person. I just introduced him to, as one of our county commissioners, John McCulloch, but it was John and his committee who were responsible for raising the matching funds. Many of you understand that the addition to this building was made possible by a grant from the state of Michigan through the Department of Natural Resources through a special bond issue that the voters approved a number of years ago for parks and recreation development but it has a matching requirement to it. You only get the grant if you're, if you're able to raise the matching funds. John and his committee were able to not only raise the $75,000 matching funds, but also raise almost $25,000 in additional money, which will be used to furnish and complete that addition, as well as provide other equipment and things for the entire building, like tables and chairs and other things that this building needs. Uh, most important in that area was the furniture for the preschool program. So we are, I don't know how we can express our gratitude to John and his committee for taking on that task and in a recession, raising almost $100,000 of money for this community. We have in recognition of John's efforts in leading that committee a plaque. So if John would like to come up here, please, and he can introduce his committee when he comes up here. John, I don't know what to say. We are just unbelievably grateful to you for taking this task on and um, this is just a just a very small token of appreciation on behalf of not only the City Commission and all of us but also the entire community for your efforts it was terrific Thank you. Thank you I didn't expect this uh, good afternoon approximately a year and a half ago uh, I was asked to join a number of uh, members of our community to take on the challenge of raising this, these matching funds that were required to take advantage of the grant to expand this center. And we were under some very tight time constraints in terms of being able to take care of that grant. Of course, a year and a half later, I'm very proud to say that we've, we've accomplished that goal uh, through a lot of effort of a, a number of people on the uh, Senior Community Completion uh, Center Committee. And at this time, I would, I would like to introduce those members and uh, have them be acknowledged. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge Harold Meininger, who was very instrumental on the committee, as well as a major contributor. Jean Chamberlain. Jean Denise DeFazio, <laughs> Kathy Howell, <laughs> Leo Mahaney, <laughs> Judy Nims, 
Cheryl Schmidt, Bob Vetter, Bill Willard, Shirley Mallard, Steve Gillette, Susan Wedley, Ken Culling, Dave Perouche, Ann Scott, Bob Weber, Jill Vetter, Jim Perry, and Maggie Kane. Did I miss anybody? Well, with that, we're just we're just very honored to be a, a part of the effort to expand this this uh, center. And I just wanted to convey a particular thanks to Jim Perry and his staff uh, for the efforts they put in and keeping us on track. And a particular thanks to Carol Wyatt, Susan Wedley, and Steve uh, Gillette for the uh, wonderful work they did on the, uh, the plaque and the, and the entrance of the building. Thank you very much. has been on the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee for almost 17 years. He has also been a member of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board as a liaison between those two boards because they do interact a lot on a lot of subjects for almost eight years. And he also, he tells me, has a grandson in the preschool program. So he is delighted to see the center open and is probably the most appropriate person to deliver the tribute to Harold and Lucy. So at this time, I would like to call up forward Bill Willard. Thanks for such a nice introduction, uh, is it Mrs. Mayor? Uh, <laughs> one of the funny things about it is people have always wondered, what do you do on these boards that you belong to? And the thing, my role really is, and we joke about it, I'm the designated speaker. And uh, that's why I'm here today. And what we're really here to do, the program says give tribute to, and some people would say that's recognition. But I think as uh, Cheryl pointed out, we're just here to thank Harold and Lucy for making this possible because without them we would not have got it done. And I think really one of the things that many of us probably don't know is a lot about Lucy and Harold. And really they're two people that have given very unselfishly of themselves to both the community and their friends for a long, long period of time. And when you talk about giving, they've given their talents, of which they both have many. Uh, they've given money, certainly the new wing is a result of that but they've given money to many other projects. But I really think the thing they've given most of is their time. Uh, the time that they have spent volunteering, particularly Harold and the things that we do in the community and these volunteer committees, uh, you just can't uh, put a value on that. It's just, uh, uh, an un, uh, just a great deal of time that you, we've never counted up over the years. I think the interesting thing about both of them is neither one of them's ever wished to receive any public recognition for what they've done. Uh, they're usually known as the anonymous donor, and that's anonymous donor of time as well as money. And in fact, on the Senior Citizens Completion Committee, when we did this and put this together, uh, we had this pledge that came in for the longest time. The majority of the committee had no idea who made the pledge. It was given by the anonymous donor. So I think we ought to do here is just let you know a little bit about Harold and Lucy. Uh, some of you may know, but not all, that Harold has been in business in Royal Oak for over 50 years and is probably our most respected realtor, or certainly the most respected. Uh, he also was part of the Parks and Recreation Board, as Cheryl said, for 34 years, served as his chairman twice, and in fact received the Michigan Recreation and Public Service Special Award for Volunteerism because of the efforts he made in the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, 
The city already recognized him once for that effort. It's something that Jim Perry reminds me of often because I live on Maxwell and we have a park down there that for years and years still called Maxwell Park. We now have to remind people that it's called Mining Nook Park, named after Harold S. Mining for all this time and, and the uh, things he's done for the community. Harold also was recognized a few years back as uh, Citizens of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce, but I don't think he really wants us to talk too much about that. What I like particular about him for us personally on the boards, he's always been a resource, he's always been willing to help all of us and to uh, show us the right direction, point us uh, in the right way. And uh, he recently helped me on one little thing, and he probably doesn't even remember that. But behind every good man is a very good woman, and that's Lucy. I don't think anybody had the idea that she's been involved in volunteerism for as long or longer than Harold, and she does it with many charitable, philanthropic uh, organizations as well as giving many personal contributions to the city alone. And I think that that is significant in its own right. She's probably helped Harold a lot more than he'd ever want to admit. Maybe he'd admit it, but uh, I think we should probably applaud her for those efforts. And I think really the neat thing about the miningers that I've been able to find out from researching this, which is talking to several friends, is they really care about Royal Oak. And they care about its people and they care about the way things have gone. And I think Maggie said it best to me on the phone, when Harold and Lucy decided to sell their home, where were they going to live? And they decided to buy a condo here in Royal Oak because they can't leave home. And Royal Oak is home. And we all appreciate that and we thank you for it. And if you look out in the hallway, as you go down the Harold and Lucy Meininger wing, you'll see a plaque that we've put there that says, this wing is named in honor of Harold and Lucy Meininger with gratitude for their contribution to the completion of this center. Their generosity brings to our community the opportunity for people of all ages to come together. And I think that sums up what this is all about. I think on a personal note, I'd like to say one thing to the Meiningers for making this happen and completing this center. And that is, I got involved in the senior citizens movement about 18 years ago. When I showed up at a city block grant hearing, I met a man named Leo Mahaney. And the two of us had an idea coming from different directions that we wanted to see a full service senior center, a center that, that can also serve the whole community. And with this and with this addition, we've got that. So all I want to say personally is thank you for helping our dream come true. Thanks a lot.
very, very appreciative of your all the efforts of the staff and everybody that put on this beautiful affair this afternoon. It was a particular joy to see the little ones and uh, to know that it's an intergenerational uh, community, which is, makes us very, very happy. And we hope we will stay in Royal Oak for many, many more years. Thank you all. And thank all of the people that contributed. It wasn't just us that did this. It was the many, 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 many of you who uh, have a hand in this also. So it's our community. It's your community center. When people ask me what I love about Royal Oak, I think of the Miningers and other families in this community who give so much of themselves in so many ways. To conclude our program this afternoon, we have another hymn by Maggie Kane, and she will lead us in the American hymn. Maggie. We chose this song today because it has such, such special words that imply the wonderful uh, feeling that people have about their home, and their community and their country. business. Uh, we received today, as part of the dedication procedure for the Senior Committee Center, a tribute from the State of Michigan from State Senator Michael Bouchard, who is our State Senator. So we'd like to thank him for this. This will hang proudly in our center, and we'd like to thank him for all of the state's efforts, as well as Shirley Johnson for all the state's efforts in terms of getting the money for the center and, and the grant and so on. So let's recognize them.
And how do you get them to stay down? Do you sew them on? Um, yes. When you have two blocks, after you actually four blocks that you've gotten this much of it together, mm -hmm. then you'll sew with a top stitch like a crazy ace. That's good. Take a picture for these. Their edges like that together. Do you see that? Clint Thompson came over. All hand pages. They're all hand uh, sweatshirts. And I'm also trying to teach them how to make the silk flower shirts like I have on. These are called um, puff shapes. And these are silk flowers. Okay. And this is scribble. <laughs> Scribble three paints and put glitter on it. Yeah. I just had a crap. Oh, I'll get you. Thank you. I'm going to Uh, this is through the City Royal Oak, and it's called the Four Season Preschool. Since we've moved in here, we noticed that even the play has changed. The children are not bumping into each other. We have about twice as much space, and it's just marvelous because they've become more creative in their play, and uh, we don't seem to have to interfere hardly at all because uh, their space, they have their space, and uh, sometimes they'll be over at the clay table talking about what they had for dinner last night and discussing it. And it's a, like a quiet little area. Or maybe they'll be in the playhouse now too. I got two little girls over there getting their wigs and purses and things on. <laughs> and they love to wear these things. Um, but we're, we're really happy with it. Just, just the space and, and the view, the park. And we have found the children to be so much more calm. We get to go outside. Uh, we have a nice playground. It has been muddy because of our typical weather, but we will be using that a lot. We have a kitchen that has counters that I don't have to bend over. <laughs> I used to wash dishes at a sink that was that high. Uh, we had a counter space that was 36 inches wide. We did everything on it. And we had this lovely counter, so we're able to do more now, and we're going to be able to do a lot more cooking, and we like to keep our group small so that we can give a lot of individual attention. So we keep the group, uh, we're, we can have 20, but we keep it at 18 per class. And next year we're going to expand it instead of two hours a day, twice a week. We're going to go to two and a half hours a day, twice a week. So that's sort of nice. We don't have to work around a bus schedule that was coming into Lockman anymore. I, I got a bachelor of science degree. I taught kindergarten for five years full time. I substituted down in Detroit five days a week and did every grade. <laughs> and then I also, when I came back after having three children, I had about four years off, came back and decided I wanted to start a preschool that did the things that I wanted the children to have in kindergarten when they came in. And so I talked to Susan Wedley, and then we went before the uh, school board and presented the idea. They said, would you, we'll give you a room for eight weeks. We'll try you out. If you don't cause us any trouble, you can stay. <laughs> and we didn't cause anybody any trouble, and it grew from eight children in the first class to 72 in the program now. And we, like I said, we have over 100 on the waiting list, usually at all times, to come in, and we try to provide the best program 
They can be between three and five. They have to be potty trained. And we mix the ages on purpose. I have taught in a preschool that had three years old separate and four year old separate, and the threes would just stare at me. And I was singing songs by myself and doing <laughs> acting by myself. And we mixed the classes. I tried this out, and it was marvelous because the threes start, came along much faster, the growth rate, because they started modeling the fours. We haven't started our intergenerational program that we want to, but we've had a lot of seniors. In fact, I think we have some every day that come in and pop in. We have a seat by our door, and if they want to come in and sit and watch, they can. And we have one gentleman that comes down every day. He comes in, and they all say, hi, Mr. Larry, and, and he sits down and watches them, and we have people come in. And the children are be becoming very comfortable with... Uh, the other generation come in and watching them and they go down to do their exercise. We do uh, exercises and games uh, the first thing they get here each day. We go down to the gym and uh, we have all these people looking in at us watching and <laughs> oh they're so cute. <laughs> uh, the new facility here is just excellent. It's a nice clean large room. I know Mrs. Mallard enjoys it a lot more and if you have a happy teacher you have happy kids. And my son has been going here for, uh, he was here last summer and this year, and my daughter was here the year before, and they both love the program. I think senior citizens are a wonderful, wonderful thing to have around children. I mean, they're real excited about children, and I know my son likes the elderly too, so I think, I think it's a great combination. Well, this is my daughter's first year, and she just loves this school. Mrs. Mallard and Mrs. Williams are her idol. It's a wonderful school. The f new facility is wonderful. It's clean. They have the beautiful park out here, and just all the surroundings are great. Um, I think it's great. I run into a lot of my neighbors in here, and they keep looking at me like, what am I doing here? And the kids seem to like it, and I like all the older people watching over the little kids. It's great. Oh, we like this room down here. This is part of the new 3,000 square foot addition. And we're directly across the hall from the preschool. And we were very happy to come down here. When we were up in room three, we were across from the dancers. And I must say that our preschoolers are far more quiet than the dancers were. This room is much more, has much more light in it. It's a great room to work. We're part of a veterans workshop group that meets here once a month and this room is just great for our sewing. The children are no problem at all. They have their own little cubicle and there they seem to stay. They're very quiet children. They're never in the upper end unless they take them specifically up there for some use of the, of the um, dining room. But the children are all, always stay down here in their preschool. I like it very much, very much. What do you like about it? Well, it's nice and roomy, and it's pleasant, and we could get a lot of work done in here. I'm really pleased to be standing in front of this beautiful, beautiful piece of, of wood and uh, brass, which was uh, designed to commemorate and uh, give special credit to all the people in the city of Royal Oak who donated money to help us build the wing for the Senior Community Center. Um, this particular piece was uh, made by Steve Gillette, who is the superintendent of uh, Parks and Forestry in Royal Oak. And each one of these leaves has a name on it and designates that that person or that company or group of people, whoever it is, uh, gave money to help build the, uh, the wing. Uh, the wing was, uh, it's very interesting, was built with a combination of resources. For example, one was a grant from the Department of, uh, Department of Natural Resources, and we had to come up with $100,000 to match that money. So this is how uh, the city came up with it. It's, it's not general revenue money. And uh, we're all very proud, not only of the effort that was made by the uh, completion committee, but also by the artists that worked on this. I, it's really, really very dramatic and very beautiful. Of course, we're very proud of the preschool area. Uh, this was something that was needed in the city of Royal Oak. We had lost the, uh, 
the rooms that we had in one of the schools for our preschool programs. So that was one of the purposes of the wing was to have a preschool area. And it's worked out very, very well. The children are very well behaved and fit in very well. Uh, in fact, we hardly know that they're here until they come and parade right along the corridor as they go into the dining room and there they do exercises and do games and things. Uh, the other part of the wing has a beautiful um, area that we use for things like Tai Chi or exercise classes or art classes. Uh, the room can be divided into uh, two separate spaces. There's also a conference room here that we use for group meetings and it just has worked out very, very well. We really needed a place to, to store chairs and tables uh, at times when they were not being used, so they put in um, sort of a cupboard on either side of the hallway, and I think they really fit in nicely. It matches the wallpaper, and it, there's a place for uh, chairs and to put tables and seasonal decorations and things that we don't use. Space is always a problem in a public building. There's always more things to store than there is space, so it really worked out well. We uh, got together with the architects and uh, told them what we wanted, and we wanted it to look as if it was all an integral part of the original building. And I think the effect has really been nice. I, right now, particularly in the springtime, if you look out in the back, you can see daffodils and tulips. Those things were all planted by staff and also by the uh, boys and girls from the Kimball National Honor Society. Um, every uh, fall, we have gotten together and put in several hundred different kinds of bulbs. And we hope we're going to be able to do that again this fall. The goal of the Royal Oak Senior Community Center has always been to provide the very best in programs for people of all ages. Yes, we have seniors during the day, but then uh, the rest of the community comes in. About 3.15, you can see little children. Uh, in the evenings, it's used for people of all ages. That will always remain our goal, to be the very, very best we can and provide programs for people of all ages and all interests in the city of Royal Oak.